Welcome to the Decipher Podcast. I'm Dennis Fisher. I'm here with my colleague, Lindsay O'Donnell-Welch. And Lindsay, this might be the most Friday of all Fridays, uh, given the CrowdStrike slash Azure outage that is happening at the moment. We're recording this uh, pretty early Friday morning, East Coast time. And we, like probably most of you, woke up to find out that um, CrowdStrike had pushed an update to uh, their Falcon EDR sensors late Thursday night, East Coast time, I guess. Um, and it caused kind of a blue screen of death situation on Windows machines. Um, there was an issue with the update, so it caused a blue screen of death. And then seeing lots of reports of those machines being in uh, reboot loops, can't take them offline to, to update them. CrowdStrike relatively quickly figured out what the issue was, I think within a couple of hours, and then you know, pushed an, another update to remediate the, the problematic one. But one of the big downstream consequences of this was that it affected Microsoft's Azure cloud platform. And that caused the whole cascading uh, series of outages with airlines, banks, media sites, um, some hospitals, some 911 services across the internet. So um, this is one of the larger of these type of incidents I can recall in the last 20 years. There used to be weird widespread internet outages back in the day, but I can't recall anything like this uh, in the last few years. Yeah, this seems really big. It's one of those ones where, and uh, just to reiterate, this isn't the cybersecurity incident or anything. This is That's an right. outage, but um, you know, this is one of the ones where you know I've got friends and family texting me and saying, why is my work telling me that I can't log on today? Or, you know, people texting me from, um, you know, the the airport being like, my flight's been delayed. Like, what is going on? Yep. <laughs> so it's similar. It's kind of reminiscent, you know, of other kind of big incidents where just normal people have kind of reached out and been like, what's happening? But um, this seems like it's the biggest thing that's happened in a while related to an outage. Um, so Definitely. we'll kind of see where it goes. Yeah. I want to um, just read the the statement that George Kurtz, um, the CrowdStrike CEO and, and founder put on Twitter. It's also on their website. It says CrowdStrike is actively working with customers impacted by a defect found in a single content update for Windows hosts. Mac and Linux hosts are not impacted. This is not a security incident or cyber attack. The issue has been identified, isolated, and a fix has been deployed. So that was about uh, three hours ago as we're recording this. Um, so there hasn't been a lot of further updates from CrowdStrike on this yet. I think from their end, they've probably done what they can do. I'm sure their service people are going to be working with customers for the next few days to get this remediated. But it does sort of illustrate the point that a lot of the internet ecosystem is sort of dependent on a very small handful of providers to, you know, to make things run right. And we don't typically think of security companies as part of that. You know, we think of backbone providers and cloud platform providers and, you know, telcos and those for sort of companies as, you know, the internet. But this does sort of highlight that one small mistake can really cause a lot of chaos in the internet at this point. Yeah. And that's something we see with different types of incidents, whether they are cybersecurity related or not, um, that mm -hmm. we've seen over the past year. And just the interconnectedness, I think, of different systems, like you mentioned before, you know, that the update appears to have impacted um, machines that were running Azure. Like yeah. the fact that those are connected, like that just widens the breadth so much of kind of the impact here. And that's something we see a lot in the tech space is just whether it is through um, different components or systems relying on each other and then how that trickles down to their customers or supply chain attacks or anything else that we might come across. Um, just all of these systems being so tightly interconnected, uh, mm -hmm. it's if something does go wrong, whether that's an outage or something else, then it has it does have these more crippling widespread impacts on end users and, and customers. It definitely does. And it reminds me for other elderly people like me, if you go back and look up this um, paper that 
Bruce Schneier and Dan Gear and a few other folks wrote in the early 2000s about the Windows monoculture at the time and how they were saying, listen, this could be dangerous for the broader internet ecosystem because of what you just described, Lindsay. If we're all reliant on the same platform, if one thing goes wrong, we have a huge problem. And now in the cloud era, there are, say, four large cloud providers that that matter. This sort of, you know, again, emphasizes that point you just made that when there is an issue like this and one of the large platforms is affected, a large portion of the Internet can just disappear, you know, and a whole bunch of critical services can just go offline. Right. And something else that's somewhat related to that, too, is just it was just kind of weird watching people scramble over the past three hours to figure out what exactly was wrong. Like I saw a few people saying, "Okay, this was uh, this outage. This was related to Microsoft. Oh, no, it's actually related to CrowdStrike. I think there was like a different separate outage earlier or something like it just seems like when people didn't understand what it was, it made it a lot more difficult to identify the problem and be like, okay, what do we actually need to do here? Um, so just the process of, rem- of you know, remediation or like trying to figure out what's exactly wrong is yeah. another thing that kind of this throws a wrench into all of. I think what a lot of people initially noticed was the Azure part of it, which was a symptom. It wasn't the root cause, but they were seeing, you know, say um, airlines grounding flights, the FAA forced all the U.S. airlines to, to land their planes and, you know, put a ground stop on, which is something saw after 9-11. We don't, <laughs> that's not a common occurrence. Um, but that was a symptom. It wasn't the root cause. So it took, as you said, I think it took folks a while to kind of trace it back and figure out what the common uh, issue was here and, and what was causing all of this. And once they did, I mean, credit to CrowdStrike for immediately sort of figuring this out on their end, getting the, the update out and getting communications out to people. They maintain a a Reddit thread, CrowdStrike does, just for like general, a lot of times it's for larger, um, broader industry cyber attacks like ransomware events or things like that. But they have an ongoing thread that people should check out if they're impacted by this that has instructions on what to do and, and how to remediate this. And we have it in our story that's up on the site now too. But one of the issues that I've seen people struggling with in that thread and elsewhere is in order to receive the the remediation update, the machine has to be online, obviously. And a lot of these machines that are in a reboot loop or otherwise, you know, having issues, they can't stay online to get the update. So you have to take the machine mm-hmm. offline, somehow get it back into a good state to keep it online, and then get that update, which is another sort of issue, especially if those servers are in a data center and you don't, you can't go put hands on them and you're relying on your hosting provider to go do that for you. It's another whole layer of problems. That That is such a pain. And especially going, you know, the time that this is happening, going into the weekend and people trying to figure out what is, you know, how to yeah. kind of best approach this with all their, um, you know, endpoints. And I mean, when you were covering this story, because, you know, we've got this up on our website now to save at Decipher, um, what were some of the, what was like the general, you know, what were some of the challenges that people talked about when they were trying to approach this workaround? Because I did see some concerns about it being manual. And if you're a bigger mm-hmm. company with, you know, hundreds of thousands of endpoints that the time frame here could potentially be a concern. Were you seeing those as well? Yeah, absolutely. Aside from the thing that I just described and what you just described, I saw people, a couple of people mentioned that uh, they had things such as their BitLocker encryption keys that were stored on a, you know, a data center server that they can't get to now because it's in a reboot loop. So they yeah. can't, you know, they can't decrypt BitLocker volumes on other Windows Windows machines, which is a disaster. Um, so there's things like that that you might not think of, um, you know, and if those aren't stored in an offline disk somewhere, if you don't have a copy of them and they're just in this this server that's, you know, constantly rebooting right now, until that's remediated, you have other problems, you know, in, in a large organization that has, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of Windows hosts that are affected by this, this is not an hours long problem. You know, this is a days or weeks long problem, probably. Um, and it's going to be a really, really long haul for those organizations. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like a big headache and nightmare. (laughs) I know. So I I would imagine that this is going to keep evolving over the next few hours and and over the weekend. So, uh, you know, we'll update the story as as we get more information and probably be back here with uh, more videos probably on Monday talking about this and, and seeing what the what the effects have been and what the fallouts have been. All right. Have a good weekend, Lindsay. Try and uh, relax. All right. Thanks. Bye.